All right, hello everyone. Hey there, Vip Vince. This is Goodies here from Hack Forums. I uh, do want to make this video um, really quickly showing uh, how I was able to get the shell um, of the uh, application that you were working on uh, earlier on your thread, uh, Buffer Overflow, bin sh shell not spawning. Now I went ahead and wrote custom shell code for this. Um, well, I mean, it's just shell code that I've written. Um, and I will go through and explain it. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and use that shell code. I'm not sure what you're using. Um, I uh, can't say that I've seen it before uh, specifically, but um, anyways, not important. So first off, here is the vulnerable.c file. Um, I went ahead and asked him for it in a PM, and he sent it to me. So uh, here we go. It includes standard input output. It just takes a parameter. Uh, it will uh, initiate an array of 200 called LOL and it will copy the argument into uh, LOL. So if you don't have an argument, it should give us a segmentation fault. Um, so let's go ahead and compile that. So uh, I'm gonna compile it as 32-bit because I'm running a 64-bit machine and uh, you are referring to 32-bit um, registers like, uh, you know, ESP and EIP and uh, EAX and all of that, right? So you're obviously using 32-bit um, architecture so it's probably in a VM but uh, anyways so all right, we're gonna compile it as 32-bit and we're gonna turn off stack protection and make it an executable stack all right so the output we'll just call it vuln and it will take uh, vulnerable.c so we have dot slash vuln and good we get a seg fault if we pass in a parameter uh, we should not get a seg fault Okay, um, so let's take a look at the shell code I wrote. Um, very, very simple shell code. All right, we jump down to this label I called J, uh, and then we call a label called R, and what it does is it will put push this address onto the stack, uh, and this would be the file name that we're executing. Um, it's going to pop that onto the EBX. Um, it's going to clear out the uh, EAX register, and we're going to push one single byte um, to the end of this uh, right here, so it's essentially going to look like this, but we can't have a um, slash x00 in our uh, shell code, and that's exactly what this would do. And all that does is uh, terminate the string, so we're not going to use any more strings. All right, then it's going to move uh, the EBX pointer inside of the EBX, um, and we're going to uh, give it an offset of eight bytes, so it would look like this. And then, you know, whatever the uh, EBX is, right? So it's going to look uh, something like that. Um, and then we're moving four null bytes to the very end, and this would be um, an environment that we're uh, executing it to, I guess. Um, it's not inheriting any environment variables, so we're pushing uh, four null bytes onto the end. All right, so then we make the uh, exec VE system call, and um, the load effective address, I mean, that can be done with, um, you know, we're moving something into our ECX, that's the EBX. Right, and then we just add... Right, but instead of doing that, we just use the uh, Leah command and uh, just makes everything just much better. Anyways, okay, so um, that's actually about it. Uh, then we make a kernel call and call it a day. So, all right, let's remove this and we're good to go. So, uh, to compile it, let's go ahead and use NASM. And again, I'm compiling it as 32 um, bit architecture. So the output, we'll just call it uh, test.o or something, uh, and it takes a shellcode ASM as a parameter. Okay, so we're going to use a linker. Um, LD-S will strip the uh, symbols. Then we're going to be using uh, L5386 as the uh, emulation. Um, so that's dash M. And uh, the output file, we'll call it shell, and it will take test.o. Whoops. Oh. All right, so we have dot slash shell, and that should spawn our shell. So who am I, uh, etc., and uh, that's our shell. So that's what we're going to be using. Uh, we can remove test.o. Um, so let's go ahead and get the shell code for that. Uh, where am I? All right. Um, uh, I wrote a little program called OP Coder. It's very very simple. It takes the obj dump disassembly output and will uh, grep it and add slash x between um, all of the bytes. So that's what we're going to be using as our shell code, and I'll just 
uh, save that for later on. So um, to show that uh, ASLR is off, I'm going to say sys kernel randomized VA space, and we do get zero. Um, and to change it, oops. Right, you just echo two into uh, the uh, same uh, file. But um, I'm going to keep it off for now. Whoops. Okay, so CD back to files. All right, here we are. So um, let's go ahead and um, see where the seg fault uh, starts. All right, so we're going to pass uh, Python. Actually, sorry, Python 2.7 because Python 3 is set as my default for some god knows only uh, reason. So let's go ahead and uh, print just letter A. Right, so no seg fault. If we print it times zero, we should get a seg fault because we're not printing anything. So let's print it, you know, times 10, and we'll see exactly uh, how many bytes it takes. So uh, 50 is not enough. 100, whoops, 100. 200, 300, damn, what is going on, there we go, okay, so we do get a seg fault, um, so let's go back to 250, and we get a seg fault, we'll say 220, okay, seg fault, and uh, so it's more than 210 and less than 220, that's less than 215, so we'll say 14, 13, 12. All right, um, oops, 12. Okay, uh, all right, so in 12, let's check uh, 211. All right, 211 is fine, and 212 takes us to, I don't know what this is called, purgatory, no man's land, I don't know. Um, I, don't, I might have a name, I don't know. But uh, so this is where we are. So we know that the offset is 12, or 212, and that just saves me the hassle of using uh, pattern.py. Um, I gotta really fix that up. It doesn't take um, little Indian ASCII uh, hex actually, so it doesn't. It, you have to convert it to hex, or sorry, uh, from hex to ASCII, and then reverse it, and then you can search for it. So I'm gonna make it take um, little Indian ASCII uh, written in hex. So um, that's gonna be much easier later. Anyways, so all right, so we have our vulnerable file and we have our shell. So let's go ahead and start up uh, GDB. All right, so um, let's go ahead and copy this, shall we? We're gonna add on a uh, just some characters here. We'll say I don't know, forty-five. Uh, actually, let's do forty-seven, forty-six, forty-five, forty-four. Right, so we should see forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven in the address uh, in regular Indian. So we check out our um, registers okay so we see uh, our EIP is not doing that so let's see what the error is oh no, okay uh, we see 46 47 um, oh there's no X there All right, there we go. So we see 44, 45, 46, and 47. Uh, perfect, that's exactly what we wanted. Um, let's go ahead and make a little knob sled of, say, 50. So it's actually a pretty big knob sled. So we'll check out the registers, um, and we can check out the uh, ESP, right? And I think I, oh my god, why am I doing that? Alright, so um, there we go. We are pointing to uh, 4445, 4647. We just want to point anywhere inside uh, this knob sled. So, um, first off, uh, okay, we can make it a little smaller of a knob sled. And let's go ahead and add our shell code to the end of that. Alright, so we look at our uh, EIP, it's pointing to 44454647, um, and our Python, let's see, uh, we have a bunch of knobs, and we see uh, right here is where it ends, 
EB165B31, EB165B31. So there we go, we can see our shellcode is uh, correct there. Um, so let's go ahead and change uh, uh, where we're pointing it to, right? So um, I'm just going to change this uh, byte by byte. Actually, I'll do the first two first. Okay, so we see that it's pointing to FFFF4647. And after running this command, that's exactly what you'd expect, right? Uh, 4647. So let's go ahead and change this to uh, DB. All right, now we see that it's pointing to 49, and that is not even anything, right? We did not tell it to point to 49. So I'm just going to tell it to point to 01, because uh, we obviously can't do 00. So we'll do 01, and that would be right um, here, okay? So if, if that works, uh, which it did, awesome, there we go. So I'm not pointing it really to the ESP. I'm just pointing it anywhere inside the knob sled, which I guess is really what you're doing anyways. Um, so, all right, there's our final command, and uh, we were able to uh, spawn the shell. All right, so ls, you know, who am I, uh, uname, etc. So we'll exit and we'll quit this. We'll say dot slash vuln. Uh, right, so we get an error here, and uh, the reason for that is it's not just going to be in the same place. Um, maybe try something larger. If you do a large enough knob sled, I mean, you're kind of bound to get into it. Um, but why don't we try something earlier that we tried earlier, like... Uh, I don't know, 20? No, that took us to purgatory. There we go, alright, so we did get our shell. Um, so just kind of mess with the memory addresses, I guess, uh, and just, I'm almost guessing um, just where it's, it is. Um, so again, ASLR is deactivated. Um, I was able to do it with ASLR activated inside the debugger. Um, and uh, anyways, so that's all I wanted to do. I do, uh, I just wanted to show you the commands that I was uh, doing to uh, spawn the shell. So uh, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you around the forums.